NC State gets their first ever win against the Georgia Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slasher U. I'm your host, Christian Rao, here with my co-host, Steve Feck. And we're going to break down the win from North Carolina State over the Georgia Bulldogs. And like I said, Steve, in the 10th try, this is the first time the Wolfpack gets a win over Georgia. The last nine went to the Bulldogs. So I thought that was a pretty interesting stat. What a way to start this one. And this was a good game. 65-54 final here. Georgia was leading at one point, uh, multiple times, actually. They they uh, they led it after the first quarter. I thought NC State did a very good job pushing it to get past the press because Georgia played the press a lot in this game. Uh, however, for NC State at the beginning of this game, they get past the press, but then they wouldn't slow down and set their offense up and get some better shots. That was something that I, I saw at the beginning that really uh, really messed with NC State. Once they figured stuff down and settled down, they looked good. They looked like that ranked team we all know and have seen so far this season, and that's why they got the win, Steve. Well, you know, I, I, I knew about this as the first time, you know, um, in the 10th try they finally beat him. I didn't know it was the first time ever. Ever, yeah, for yeah, yeah I, I mean, women's. I mean, that, yeah. that's yeah, ever is a long time. I mean, I mean, that, that's uh, that's uh, that's incredible. But I, mean, I think North Carolina State, you know, for me in this game, it was the exclamation point as to why they are ranked where they are ranked. I believe it's they're at number eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay, and then, and admittedly, you know, I I was drinking the Louisville Kool Aid. When I, I saw them in their opening game, and I'm like, no one's going to beat Louisville in the ACC. They're, they're going to run the ACC, and they're, they're they're still a good basketball team. But North Carolina State is making a statement, and their graduate transfer, Mimi Collins. Yes. For the casual women's basketball fan, and you're used to like following, you know, Leah Boston or anybody, you know, uh, AZ Fudd or you know the the crew out in Stanford or Caitlin Clark, you need to memorize, you put it in your memory, Mimi Collins, because she is going to make a huge difference for this Wolfpack team. I mean, she had, she had a great game finished with 19 points. She was six for 10, you know, from the floor. She even had a three pointer. She was perfect from the free throw line. She did everything that a player, a go-to player needs to do. So that was the thing for me that jumped right out. Plus the fact that North Carolina State came back, they were down by double digits late into the into the first half. They were down by double digits and they just kept like you said just kept chipping away, chipping away. I thought the the, the inside game uh, Camille um I want to say it's Hubby. It's either Hubby or Habby. I can never remember whether I don't know why I mix names up. Like that, you know, it's a good thing I'm not a politician or anything anymore, you know, or I'm not having to uh, be graded on my memory because I'm always mixing names up. But I thought she did a nice job in the paint inside. And really, North Carolina State controlled the rip. They controlled, you know, the inside game. And that ultimately, for me, was the difference in the game. Yeah. But speaking of Mimi Collins, because she deserves more conversation here, you know, transfer from Maryland. Initially, I think this is going to change now, but initially she was not getting the same amount of minutes that she was in Maryland in right. this game. And But all of those minutes were very impactful minutes. And we just saw it in this game here as well against Georgia. Now she just had 35 minutes. So I think we're going to see a lot more play from her. She was a big reason of them being able to figure out their offense after, as I was mentioned earlier, yeah. where they were really good at getting past the press because Georgia was doing very good pressing them initially, but they found a way to get past the press, but then they were making bad selections by trying to throw the ball, getting turnovers or making bad quick shots, not high percentage shots. Mimi Collins was doing a fantastic job slowing that down. Even if she would get the ball in the post, if she decided that wasn't a high percentage shot, she wasn't afraid to stop, get that pace, bring it back out to the perimeter, pass it back to one of her guards and let that shot clock move a little bit. Now it's one thing if you can get down the press and get an easy layup and you get a basket in six seconds, that's fine. Great. Fantastic. Good for you. That's a good possession, more possessions, more points, especially if you're trying to get ahead in the lead. But if you're having a hard time making those high selection shots, calm it down, play your game. And I think Mimi Collins did a really good job with that. The guards of North Carolina state did a really good job with that as well. We saw some really good play from Hayes and Johnson as well in this one. Diamond Johnson is, yeah. is very good. Now, she was the sixth man for NC State last year. She is obviously doing fantastic things 
as the starting guard for them. She played also 35 minutes. She had five assists, and they were five crucial assists as well. Right. I like this NC State team. This is a team that looked really good earlier in the week against Iowa. This is a team that just looked really good against Georgia. And then now we're going to see them face uh, a South Florida team that looks really good. Uh, now, as for Georgia, now they are building a pretty great culture there right now. They just got a brand new coach coming in They from, from UCF. They brought three players with them. Um, right. They were without Boyd. You know, she had an ankle injury. If you saw at the beginning of the game, she was on the bench with a boot. There's a lot of really good things to still be excited about. If you're Georgia, just because you don't have a number next to your, your name and the rankings doesn't mean that you should be, you know, really bummed or anything out. You're still a really good team and you put, you, you were leading against the top 10 team in a nation for a really long time. You're eight and two. I think you're going to have some success in the SEC. It might not be winning the whole dang thing this year. It might not be the case, but you might get a first round, a second round win in the tournament. This team, though, right now is a tournament team in Georgia. I think they're a tournament team. And if not a tournament team, they're a top seed in the, in the WNIT. That's what I like about this Georgia team. Give it one more year for the coach to build this culture, and yeah. they are a top team in the SEC, one of the top teams. Yeah, I, I'm not as high on their uh, chances in the SEC, uh, and that plays more as how deep a conference that the SEC is on the women's side. Um, whenever you start a description of a team saying, well, they're building a culture, that generally is setting up the fact that don't get your hopes up true. too no, high. That's true. But I think even with that culture, there's a chance that they can still make the tournament in year one because of the three players they brought with them, the UCF, that helps really speed that that culture boost, if you will. Okay, that, that's a fair enough point. But I mean, from what I have seen of George, again, it, it must be written into state law that University of Georgia cannot schedule really good teams early in the season. I, I mean, that does happen. It happens in football, happens in baseball. I'm sure it happens in, in all the where they just they just don't. Their approach as an athletic department is to in the early going try to make it as easy, get that confidence, get that chemistry going. And then when you get into conference play, you can step up. Um, I, I do think now watching the first quarter of that game, when they scored 22 points, I can see your optimism for this, for this Georgia side. Yeah. But they only scored 32 points the rest of the game. That then leads me to say, okay, when they start having to go a little deeper and their legs start to, you know, get tired, and and that happens with every basketball team, not just the great ones or the – I mean, every basketball team come the fourth quarter or the second half in the case of, the, of, of a men's competition, it's a gut check. I mean, I mean you, you are tired. Basketball is one of those up-and-down sports. You mm -hmm. get tired at the end of the game. George is going to have to show me more – on the inside, again, because of the conference they're playing and the competition they're playing against, they're going to have to show me more on the inside before I go into them saying they're a tournament team. But I can see them finishing stronger, continue to develop. We talk about that a lot when we're talking about college basketball. Teams develop and they blossom late. Virginia Tech on the men's side last year. But there have been teams on the, on the women's side last year that finished really I, Iowa. Iowa played pretty well all year, but they really finished strong. And that's what led to them being ranked so high coming into this season. So it's possible WNIT bit. It would not surprise me because again, the strength of conference is going to get you a lot of looks. And, and the more looks you get by these different uh, conference committees, the more likely that, you know, if you have a couple of good performances, you're going to get an invitation. Uh, NCAA tournament, uh, uh, wait and see. I don't think this is going to be the last time we talk about the Georgia women's basketball team on this show this season, because I do think there's going to be a lot to be excited about. Now, they might not be a team that wins the whole SEC. Remember, let's put a reminder out that the number one team in the country is in the SEC in South Carolina. However, I do have a lot of optimism for this team. I do think they are on a fast pace um, to a not only just rebuilding their culture, but finding success, maybe at not the tippy top of the SEC, but high enough in that conference to where we are seeing them getting a bid to the NCAA tournament come this March. I do. I'm going to hold on to it right now. We'll talk about it maybe next month or so and see if that changes. But right now I'm pretty optimistic about that. 
Let us know in the comments below what you thought about this game between NC State and the University of Georgia. The Wolfpack get their first ever win against the Lady Bulldogs. Let us know in the comment description below your thoughts about both teams moving forward. Hit like and subscribe while you're there. And thanks for watching. Slash are you.